knew I was black visually um, and, and I first found that out when I was about 14 or 15 uh, because I'd been brought up in a white children's home so I didn't, it wasn't even an issue what colour you were when you're kids anyway. And I remember one day when I was about 14 or 15 I'd been fostered out to a white family and one morning right out the blue I looked in the mirror and I saw a black face looking back at me and, and I was quite shocked because I hadn't realised that I was a different colour to all my mates. And I can remember like running over the road to where one of my friends lived and saying, you know, why didn't you tell me I'm black, aren't I? And, and they just said, well, yeah, but you could be red, white and blue with pink spots, but you know, so what? So I still, because I grew up in um, a white community, and then I married into a white family, and then I lived over the water, you know, in a white community again. Um, I can remember, looking back, all the different criticisms I got off people, like, uh, you know, I married a white guy, and me children are mixed race, but they looked white. And people would tell me, oh, who are those kids? What are you doing with those kids? You know, I remember one woman saying to me, and quite innocently, I'm going, you know, they're mine, I'm their mother, not thinking of any other reason why they should ask me. And it wasn't until I moved over to Liverpool in 71, and, um, and that was when I started seeing um, different cultures, black people especially, and realising, yeah, I'm like them, I look like them, because I'm the same colour as them. And I researched and found... Uh, you know, information about Liverpool-born blacks from, you know, the centuries that they'd been living in Liverpool. And I found I could relate to it, and it was like that was who I was now. I was this mixed-race girl rather than just a mother or just a wife. I was a mixed-race um, single gay woman, and I was living in Liverpool where there were other black people. And... Um, uh, I, when I first moved over here, I lived in Walton, which is the north end mm. of Liverpool. And there's a, at the time, might still be now, at the time there was a big divide between the north and south. And you found that most black people lived in the south of Liverpool and the whites lived in the north. And with living in Walton, I'd get, I'd get nigger bashed. You'd get queer bashed or you'd get nigger bashed. And I'd get nigger bashed living in Walton and round um, Kensington I lived for a while and it wasn't for quite a few years before I realised why I was getting beat up and, um, and I moved to the south end of Liverpool and that was when it stopped uh, any of the, the beatings I was getting you know just people in the street didn't like the look of you or how you, if you were whoever you were with and they'd just come up and give you a smack it was really nasty in them days but in them days because I was so unaware of my whole persona being I'm a gay black woman um, I just thought they were just nasty people I didn't realize it was because I, I was a different color to them or because of my sexuality the, the people I was hanging around with at the time when I was first took up photography um, most of them were gay and um, there was a lot of turmoil going on with people because um, if you came out as gay in your family, a lot of families, you know, sort of disowned, disowned mm -hmm. the person. And there was a lot of that going on. And because I was on my own anyway, because um, um, I'd, I'd left a marriage and I'd been uh, deemed unfit to mother my daughters, but I could mother my son. And uh, I'd left my son with the rest of the family because I didn't want to split them up. So I found I was on my own and it was like I was single again and it was like I was starting my life again. And so the people who I hung around with uh, were, were, uh, had similar things going on in their life, like mine, as far as being disowned. Um, so um, I forget who it was who, who got me into taking photographs. But I know I bought a camera, a second-hand camera, off someone and uh, started taking photographs just because I didn't have any of my own, of myself, or anything, in fact, like that. So taking photographs was a way of me having a record of my life. 
I'm quite interested in the fact that you talk about having this connection with people who've been disowned. Yeah. Did you find that it was mainly that all gay people have this sense of being disowned, or was it something really specific to the black experience? Um, no, it wasn't specific to the black experience. Um, I think to gay people it was um, an experience that uh, most of them went through, even if they weren't disowned by their family. Um, they were very um, oppressed. You couldn't, you know, you couldn't be natural naturally how you felt uh, and be camp or anything like that because you'd get you'd get ridiculed or humiliated or you get put down anyway. And so a lot of people found themselves restricting their own sort of growth and development in a, on a, on a sort of artistic level because of that. The gay the gay community is very white and very male-led. Uh, it still is today. It was even more so then. Um, but because of that, we found that we'd, you know, we'd have a ball, go for a dance and all, a drink in the clubs and all that, the gay clubs. And then when they'd finish, we'd find ourselves coming into Toxteth and doing the black clubs. And in the black clubs, there there was all kinds of types of people, and you know, particularly the black elders and the black gangsters. They'd look after me and this other man and anyone else that we brought. And it was dead obvious that we were gay. They knew we were gay. And they looked after us. And, it, and the, the black communities uh, going, um, judging on mainstream media, you know, they make out that the black community are really homophobic. And yeah, you get your extremists in the black community, just like you do in any other community. Um, but the people who we met at that time weren't. And I think it's because of, over time, because of mainstream media being, having more and more sort of output on saying, you know, what society's made up of, it's mainstream media that's put out that black communities are homophobic and they're not, it's just individual people who are. <laughs>